From Washington, this is VOA News. U.S. coalition partner Jordan sees one of its pilots captured by Islamic State militants. And Washington calls for political progress in Somalia after a new prime minister is appointed. I'm Michael Lippin. Islamic State militants captured a Jordanian fighter pilot on Wednesday after his plane crashed in northern Syria. The IS group said it shot down the Jordanian jet, but Washington said there was no evidence to prove that. Sharon Bain has more. According to the U.S. Department of Defense, up to December 15th, partner nations Jordan, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates have been responsible for 65 of the total 553 airstrikes in Syria. Andrew Liepman of the RAND Corporation says Washington and its allies are trying at all costs to avoid collateral damage. It's a lot harder to identify, to distinguish between the communities and ISIL. So we're being extremely careful, I suspect. The tolerance for collateral damage in both Syria and Iraq is really, really low. We do not want to accidentally drop a bomb on the wrong guys. But according to IHS Jane's Intelligence Review, there has been no significant change in the tempo of Islamic State operations since the airstrikes began. Sharon Bain, VOA News, Washington. The United States is urging Somalia's new prime minister to build a stable government for the war-torn country. Somali lawmakers approved the appointment of Omar Abdi Rashid Ali Sharmarki as prime minister on Wednesday. The Obama administration called on Mr. Sharmarki and other Somali political leaders to make progress toward realizing the country's goals. You're listening to VOA News. Pakistan's Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif says terror suspects will be tried in newly established military courts as his government reacts to last week's school massacre by Taliban militants. Mr. Sharif addressed the nation after a day-long meeting with his cabinet and other top-ranking officials on a new action plan to deal with terrorism. He gave no details on the military courts, but said they will carry out speedy trials of terrorists. Prime Minister Sharif said the blood of Pakistani children cannot be spilled in vain. He said the Peshawar school massacre shook the nation and that extremism must be eradicated. Other steps in the Pakistani government's new plan include efforts to cut off funding for terror groups and stopping banned groups from operating with new names. Iraqi officials say a suicide bomber targeting pro-government Sunni, militia, Sunni militiamen has killed at least 22 people in an attack near the country's capital. The blast happened early Wednesday in the town of Madain, about 45 kilometers south of Baghdad. Iraqi officials said most of the dead were pro-government Sunni fighters who had gathered to receive their salary. Australian authorities have arrested and charged two men as part of a counter-terrorism investigation. One of the men, 20-year-old Suleiman Khalid, was charged on Wednesday with possession of documents designed to facilitate a terrorist attack. The other, a 21-year-old man whose name was not released, was charged with disobeying a police order. An Australian police, police official said the documents seized from Khalid contained discussion of potential government targets to attack in Sydney. But the official said there was no specific time frame for any attack. Here in the U.S., film studio Sony Pictures has started online distribution of its controversial comedy The Interview a day after announcing that 200 independent theaters will screen the movie on Christmas Day. The movie is now available across several digital platforms, including YouTube, Google Play, and Microsoft Xbox. 
Sony says it was essential to release the movie quickly because of a recent cyber attack on its business by hackers whom it says wanted to stop free speech. Sony pulled the interview from general release last week after several large U.S. theater chains initially refused to show it because of threats of violence against cinemagoers. The comedy tells the story of two journalists who were recruited by U.S. intelligence to assassinate North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. North Korea condemned the movie. Unknown attackers also hacked the computer network of Sony Pictures earlier this month, stealing highly confidential information. I'm Michael Lippin in Washington. That's the latest world news from VOA.